Lie. We Everyone look. at home is going to be going, what? how could that yeah. possibly be <laughs> true? And there is a massive voice in my head going, Same this true. is true. I know exactly what it is. Really? Yeah. yeah, there is. I, we... ju I just did St Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know it sounds ludicrous. Lee Mack, make a decision before the ship's sake. common sense. Yeah, it's a lie. Let's not look stupid. All right, go on. We'll say it's a lie. <laughs> Saying it's a lie. OK, Reese, fact or fiction? It is... lie. No. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Uh, Reese didn't used to work at a funeral directors that offered themed funerals. Uh, actually, I plan to put my ashes while still hot in one of those council wheelie bins. That'll show them. <laughs> Charlie Brooker, you're up next. For six years, I pretended to a girlfriend that I was partially deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Seems reasonable enough. Um, <laughs> David's team, what do you think? After how many years of going out with her did this start? Um, shamefully quickly. Was by pretending to be part of death how you clinched the deal early on. <laughs> Are you saying I have to use pity <laughs> to attract people? I'm saying you might have used pity. <laughs> well, I'm not above you... it. <laughs> Did she have a very irritating habit that precipitated your going deaf? Yes, talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was talking about something that was very important to her. Some emotional thing. Right. And um, she said, you weren't listening to me, and got very upset, started crying, and so I thought, I'll lie <laughs> and tell her I'm deaf in one ear. Which so, I did. So and, I... and at that point, what you're saying to her is, I, I didn't hear anything because I'm deaf in one ear. I thought we were sitting together in silence. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I thought was happening. No, I, I had my attention taken up with something else, and I, I, I said it what apologetically. Was that? Stroking his guide dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what he called it, don't <laughs> Did you elaborate on why you were deaf in the ear after you had yeah. to go? What, what, was um, your, what was your reason? I said that when I was a child, I had nearly drowned when I was like four in a swimming pool and this had left me deaf in one ear. I, I clearly don't try shaking my head. And yeah. I felt quite bad because I, I told the lie early on and then I had to maintain it. So did you tell her ever after the 60s or did the relationship just break up and you never told her? I never told her. Right. I, t I didn't tell her. I told... I, I wrote about it in a newspaper column. <laughs> That's nice. Right. Well, she's a Geordie, they're robust. <laughs> so, oh, actually, to be fair, that now that adds credence to the fact he didn't want to hear her, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to put myself in the position of that woman. Sure Six years! Done, You've lied. You've lied to me. A big lie? It's quite a big lie. You'd be surprised how often it doesn't come up. Now that, that, that's, a, that's a big lie. And the advantage is, after telling that lie, half the time it comes up, you can pretend you haven't heard. <laughs> so what do you think? So you think it's... A lie. You think it's a lie? Horrifically, I think it's true. I think it might be true. You think it's true. Charlie, is it truth or lie? <sighs> it's, uh, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> that you just told us is true. Yes, I'm afraid. I'm afraid it is. And it was terror. It was such a burden. <laughs> oh, poor oh, you. Yeah. <laughs> we, for the first time I in introduced her to my parents. We're going down to meet them on the train. I suddenly thought, oh, God, she's going to mention that. And so I had to turn around to her and say, don't bring it up. My mother blames herself. <laughs> I didn't want to lose her. I was desperate. Having told this terrible lie, I was locked into it. I could I didn't tell her I was going to... Can't you see? The fact that you found that moving? You, cold-hearted monster! I'm not having this! <laughs> you can't call us cold-hearted. You do the... You, you live a six mistakes, year long... David! <laughs> yes, and for which they must be punished! <laughs> Oh, yes, it's, uh, it's amazingly true. Uh, Charlie did pretend to a girlfriend for six cruel years <laughs> that he was partially deaf. Uh, ironically, like all his other girlfriends, she was partially sighted. <laughs> Our next round is called The Ring of Truth. I'll be offering the team some bizarre celebrity facts, but are they true or did we get them from Wikipedia? <laughs> Lee's team, take a look at this clip. Um, we do a bigger one for the trucker, for the actual, the really hungry person, which consists of a 
Saint kidney pie, peas, tomatoes, chips, mushrooms, fried potatoes, two thick bread and butter, and it comes up really heaped well up on a plate. Like egg and chips, bacon and chips, sausage and chips, corned beef and chips, egg, bacon and chips, everything what goes with the chips. I uh, should say what they didn't show you there was the toilet where Gillian McKeith was spending one of the happiest days of her life. <laughs> So here's the uh, related fact, right, for Lee's team. Christina Aguilera once followed a strict diet where every meal had four food items. One crunchy, one soft, one hot, and one cold. Lee's team, could that be true? That's not very specific, is it? There are more specifics. They had to be bold, coloured, you know. Example meal, right? Raw red pepper, which would be red and cold. Steamed broccoli, which would count for green and hot. Scrambled eggs, yellow and hot, and raw carrot sticks, which, as we all know, are orange and cold. They're not cold, they're crunchy. That's two crunchy the things. Crunchy. The peppers they're cold. cold as well, unless you've heated them up. Yes, I, I know, but, so... but, but, it, but the system is one crunchy, one soft, one hot, one cold. So don't, don't start talking about something that might coincidentally be cold and crunchy. Yes. That's just confusing. Its selling point was its crunchiness, I'll give you that. In, in, in this instance, in this the instance. carrots there playing the crunchy the role. The crunchy role. And could say to the pepper, oh, actually, I've, I've done cold as well, but yes. today I'm, I'm on crunchy. All right, I've been crunchy, but today I'm cold. You know. so <laughs> any, but any food can be served in all of those ways. You're quite right. No, a grape cannot be crunchy, you idiot. Have you ever eaten the pepper? Don't talk to Michael Ball yeah. like that. Yeah. He was in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah. What have you ever done? What if you froze a grape? Hey, listen, I sat through him in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> I know worked harder. It's all right, I've an Olivier it's... Award. <laughs> it's I think it's true. Because that's the sort of stupid thing that people like her do to give their life some purpose and meaning is come up with a set of arbitrary rules, something for them to think about while they're sitting on their thin asses. <laughs> Okay, I think it's I think it's true. I'll go on, I'll go with my team on this one and say that that's the truth. You're saying it's true. Okay. Uh, it's it is true. Oh. 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 <laughs> True, Christina will go to any lengths to maintain that slightly slutty look we've all come to know and love. <laughs> Which means, at the end of that round, um, Lee's team is in the lead by four points to two. <clears throat> Our next round is called This Is My. We're about to bring on a mystery guest that each of Lee's team will claim to have a special relationship with, but only one of them will be telling the truth, and it's up to David's team to decide who. So, please, welcome this week's special guest... Donna. So, Charlie first, uh, what is Donna to you? Uh, this is Donna, who's teaching me basic home maintenance. All right, uh, Lee, what, what, what is Donna to you? This is Donna, and she saved my life when she threw me a life belt after I fell off my boat. <laughs> Okay, uh, Michael, what is Donna to you? Uh, this is Donna. She uh, has been my number one super fan since she was 17. Uh, she even has a toilet seat cover with my face on it. <laughs> Michael has a fan. <laughs> David's team, who would you like to start with? Michael, when did you start your relationship with your fan? Uh, I, I have a relationship with, with most of my fans. <laughs> how, did you, how did you get to know? Uh, Donna. Yeah. I, I've uh, seen her at the uh, uh, front of crowds House. of audiences yeah. that have come and waited at stage doors and you sign autographs and you stop and you have a so chat. Some, and some shows only Donna turns only up. Only Donna is there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so what makes Donna your number one fan? Well, a number of things. I released a, a, a charity single and so she went and bought them all in a shop and then sold them on at her school. Isn't that illegal? <laughs> Uh, open air concerts. She'll she'll always try and be the first down the front, so she'll go into training prior to uh, <laughs> the game, so that she can get there first. Do you have like a number two fan and a number three fan? Well, it, it's um, no, no. <laughs> everyone's number one. Oh. <laughs> um, Charlie, what sort of home maintenance tips are you being given? Very, very basic ones. My home's a mess, and I'm not very good at sort of maintaining. 
you know, looking after anything in my house. So an ex-girlfriend.